Welcome to the uh, Clayton Chambers uh, Eggs and Issues. Uh, my name is Jim Perricone. Uh, I have the privilege of chairing the Economic Development Committee and uh, I'm leading off this morning's presentation. I grew up outside of New York, but I was smart enough to move down here like many folks. When I came down, I was a Yankee and since I've stayed, I am now known as a damn Yankee. So. <laughs> So with that, uh, I want to begin with first some thank yous. Thank you to all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here this morning. We appreciate your attendance and your willingness to hear about what we're doing. Uh, second, I want to thank the members of the Economic Development Committee. Uh, they have been working for 18 months to help shape where we're going with respect to economic development here in the Clayton area and their efforts uh, uh, are and the wisdom they've shared over those 18 months have been uh, greatly appreciated. And their continuing efforts will continue to be appreciated. I want to thank the Chamber Board and Dana Wooten for their support of the committee and its efforts. Uh, uh, without their support, those things don't happen. And last of all, I want to thank my fellow presenters, Angela Hardison from the Chamber uh, for uh, being part of this and uh, all the behind the scenes help she's provided. Uh, Stacy Beard will also be speaking, who's the uh, uh, chief Information Officer, not Chief Public Affairs Officer from the Town of Clayton. And uh, all the work she's put into this and continues to provide support to us. Uh, Dave DeYoung, uh, who is now the uh, Director of uh, Economic Development and Community Services, uh, Community <laughs> Development for uh, the Town of Clayton, who's an integral part of what we're doing here. And uh, uh, last but not least, uh, Ruth Anderson, who's chairman of the board, and will be wrapping up today's uh, presentation. With that, I'll start with this, economic development. Uh, it's been going on and will continue to go on whether we're involved or not, okay? Uh, we don't pretend that this is something we invented or something uh, that uh, is brand new. Uh, it goes on. The question is, uh, why are we here? And that's so that we can shape that process uh, because if we shape that process, we believe we can get better results and a better return on investment. So that's what this is all about. Not, not starting something new, but helping to shape something that's going on to get better results. Okay, as you look at this slide, uh, we were talking in preparation for the presentation about what is economic development. And kudos to Dave uh, DeYoung for finding this definition. Um, I want to talk about it in terms that I can better understand. And I tend to think of things as a what, why, how, and who. So when it comes to economic development, what's the what? Okay? In simple terms for me, it's we want people and businesses to come here and we want them to stay. Okay? Nothing more complicated than that. Why? Because when people and businesses come here, it helps create prosperity and a better quality of life for all of us if we do it well. Uh, how? The goal is to uh, retain jobs that we have and bring businesses here to bring new jobs because uh, what do jobs do? They fuel our economic engine and uh, uh, by fueling that economic engine, they help create a better and stronger tax base which helps uh, provide community services. So all these things are tied in. And although the definition doesn't talk about the who, what it, uh, I think that's as important as anything else and the who for this to really work is all of us. Everybody in this room, all the businesses in this community, the municipal entities that are involved, the volunteer organizations, they're all part of driving economic development in the direction we want to see it go. So uh, we're going to hear more about that in terms of your engagement from Ruth as she wraps up the presentation this morning. Next thing, uh, as the committee got started, one of the things was to how do we frame what we're doing? So we wanted to use a construct of some sort to help visualize what uh, we were going to do. And we came up with the wheel, okay? And uh, the wheel has been used as a construct for many things over the years. In this particular case, uh, what we're trying to illustrate is this, that this is a diverse community. Uh, it's made up of a lot of different things, uh, but those diverse things are interlinked and they're interdependent, okay? Um, there are different areas, and we'll talk about that more in a minute, uh, uh, across Clayton, and have, they have different needs. There are different organizations, there are municipal entities, and they need to all come together and collaborate if we want to move this forward in a constructive way. So the wheel was the construct, a uh, simple idea. If a part of the wheel isn't working, if it's broken, uh, if they're not working together, the wheel doesn't roll, and that's what we're attempting to visualize. Uh, 
Beyond that, there's a second part of this, that uh, Clayton is not an island. We don't exist apart from the things around us uh, and the things that surround us. Uh, uh, we need to collaborate not only internally within the greater Clayton community, but we need to collaborate with the entities and organizations around us and the communities around us. With that, I'm pleased to see this morning we have representatives from the Triangle East uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, a community that uh, is a neighbor, a long time, uh, uh, you know, we know all these people, they know us, and it's great to have them here, so thank you for being a part of this morning. Uh, we have uh, uh, the county represented with uh, uh, its chief executive officer with its uh, chief economic development officer. So Rick, Chris, both, thank you to both of you for being here. And we have the region represented, and that's something that's exciting because we are part of the greater Triangle region and we know all the things that are taking place around us. And we're represented, uh, and they're represented here today with Mr. Ryan Combs, the executive director of the Research Triangle Regional Partnership. And Ryan, we thank you for being here this morning, taking time to uh, come down from Raleigh and be a part of our community. So uh, those collaborations are equally important to this being a successful effort, and we greatly appreciate uh, the people that are here this morning to be a part of this. Next thing, we talked about districts. Uh, um, when we started the process again, we wanted to recognize that Clayton wasn't the same across the geography, that we have different districts and that they have different needs and uh, different goals. So. Uh, as we began to formulate where we were going, that's one of the things we started to do is to segment those districts. And uh, we're trying to work, uh, we're not trying, we are working with the town cooperatively in terms of uh, dovetailing those districts with the future land use plan that the town has in place because we think there's a lot of synergy there to be gained. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. That will evolve uh, as the years go on, but it is part of where we're going in the future and everybody needs to understand that. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, key part of that, I guess the key message I want to say is that as we help the different districts, it's with the idea of uh, when we help one, it's not at the expense of the other districts. It's a lot like raising children. You recognize they all have different needs and you want to help them, but you're not doing it at the expense of one of the other children. Same thing here. For the next three slides, I'm going to focus quickly on uh, what's our initial focus. We had to start somewhere. We can't do everything in the beginning. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I'd encourage you to get uh, copies of the vision statement. There's a lot of information there. It's available on the website uh, for the chamber. Um, and you can start to see where we're going. One of the things I want to say about that is it will evolve over time. What you see today will probably change. Uh, things happen that we can't anticipate. Five or six years ago, who would have guessed that Griffles would be making the kind of investment that they've made over the last few years? That Novo would spend $2 billion uh, building a new project in town? That uh, OPW would add an addition? So with those changes, we need to evolve our vision. It can't be static. So um, that's number one. Number two, um, branding. Uh, that's one of the things we feel we had to, to start with, we had to start with. Um, a clear statement in terms of branding, and you're going to hear a lot about that this morning from Angela and Stacy. So I'm not going to go into it uh, in depth, but I want to say two things or make two points. First, we're selling Clayton, and we need to do that well. Uh, we need to package it efficiently so we get the message across. We think that uh, art and culture, and when I say we, I'm talking about the committee that drove this, um, we think that our art culture and uh, the recreational opportunities available here in Clayton are key pieces of things that we can use to di differentiate ourselves from other, uh, uh, other areas and help in terms of our branding message. So you'll hear more about that. Second, uh, uh, we need to be sending a compelling, consistent, and constant message so that people remember us, that uh, we capture the phrase I like a share of mine. Somebody taught that to me years ago, that we're remembered. And to make that point, uh, the question I'd ask you to all think about it is when I say Apple, do you think about fruit or do you think about phones? Uh, so you know, somebody out there created a constant, consistent, and compelling message to get that in your head. And that's what we want to do with respect to Clayton. The next thing is workforce de development. Anybody in business knows that without a workforce, it's hard to have an effective business, uh, that this is something we all need. And with that, uh, um, you know, the concept's not very complicated. 
Uh, people don't go where they can't find work, and uh, uh, businesses don't go where they can't find employees. So uh, uh, we feel this is a key point. The good news is the chamber has a workforce development committee. Uh, Scarlett uh, Tyner is here, and she chairs that. And uh, uh, they're off to an awesome start uh, looking at some things. We feel we have a supporting role within the Economic Development Committee in that regard. And that is related to getting a uh, uh, Johnson Community College campus here in Clayton for a number of reasons. Uh, so that's something we're going to be focused on. And Dave's going to uh, get into a little more detail about that. So we see that as the second key initiative in terms of moving forward. Beyond that, we're going to be looking, uh, as these things roll out, at transportation initiatives and at the district level initiatives. So there are the things coming, but we had to start somewhere, and we can't do it all at once. So this is where the focus is. And with that, I'm going to end my portion of the presentation. I got lucky as the chair. I had a very short opening here, and I get to turn all the heavy lifting over to the uh, rest of the presenters. And to go on from here, I want to bring up Angela Hardison. Angela is the marketing director for the chamber. She does yeoman's work behind the scenes, and uh, I think you're going to enjoy what she has to say. Thank you. What I want to talk about is place branding, and uh, Jim mentioned the districting and the emphasis on branding, and I want to, I want to uh, mention the actual action item in the plan. It says, in, in collaboration with the Town of Clayton's Public Information Officer, to create and initiate a Clayton brand marketing program for the Clayton Chambers, Chambers service area that includes district sub-branding. So that's the actual action item, and what that really means is we are looking uh, not to rebrand Clayton. Clayton has a great brand, and Stacy's going to talk about that in just a moment. Um, but we are looking to expand it. Um, and why place branding? Well, place branding is more about doing than a logo. Um, so we are looking at taking the brand, the current brand, um, and integrating it into various areas. Um, it's about thinking long term and building a uh, competitive identity for Clayton. It's about working collaborative uh, with, with all the stakeholders. And what does the stakeholders mean? It means all of you. Um, it means us as the chamber. Um, it means the town. It's everybody working together to actually facilitate that brand and to communicate that brand. And everybody's heard of place branding, um, right? Have you heard that word before? Most of you? Okay. Talk about one that comes to mind, for example. Anything? What about Keep Austin Weird? Has anyone heard of that? Um, that's place branding in action. It's not just a tagline. It's actually businesses using it. It's the residents using it. Business actually take on that, that brand or that tagline, and they incorporate it into their model of creative thinking and thinking outside the box. Um, so that's a big picture of what place branding is. And what we want to do is um, get everybody on board the way people in Austin get on board with think um, with um, Keep Austin Weird, we want everybody in Clayton to be on board with our, our brand as well. Uh, and it, this is just going to provide a more sustainable um, competitive advantage in general. So what does it do? Um, it's going to define what makes us unique. And Jim already alluded to that, um, and the committee uh, created um, a couple of different elements as far as branding components. Uh, related to our arts and our recreation. And if you read the vision statement, you'll see how we want to effectively use those. Uh, we want to increase the potential to attract residents, bolster business, boost tourism, and en engage the current residents. Well, my goodness, that sounds like a chamber, right? Uh, so that's exactly why we are advocates of place branding. And Stacy's going to um, go into depth about what Clayton can actually do as far as that goes. So let me give you an example. Everybody likes a good graphic, right? So an example of this is if everyone in Clayton, all the stakeholders that we just talked about, used the same language, the same names for the districts, the same descriptions, the same um, graphics to, um, to talk about those, when it comes to marketing Clayton and we're all on the same page, we will look more cohesive. Um, Jim mentioned the districts. Here is a sample of some district names. This is not, uh, this is not um, something that we have uh, flushed out yet but, uh, completely. But what we want to do is we want to give each district its own identity. And therefore, we can sub-brand inside those districts. 
And this is an example of maybe something that the Clayton Chamber would put on their websites. And you can see we've integrated the Think Clayton, Think Business, uh, which is the brand that we currently have. But it's integrated within the chamber. And here's an example of how maybe the town would use the same um, district names, same uh, identities, same descriptions, same graphics. So both of us using the same things, same language, same graphics, same district names, same descriptions, but in different ways within our own brands. So this is what we anticipate um, with our vision. Another thing that we anticipate is what makes us unique, or one thing that we want to hone in on is what makes us unique. Um, Clayton's Sculptural Trail is extremely popular, and if you go, um, if you look at um, some of the um, comments on Facebook and, and other social media, you can see how popular this particular component of Clayton is. The committee has an action plan which says, let's expand that outside of the downtown area. With these districts that we just talked about, let's put an art piece in each district and let's also put it in the gateway to the town. Um, and of course, we're going to be working with the Town of Clayton's Art Advisory Board in conjunction with them to create that program and to put some parameters around that. And these would be privately, um, uh, private sources and grants where possible uh, to, um, to fund this. But this is something that we really think is an important component to um, that place branding, moving the, the logo and the town's tagline into actual uh, doing, which is actually putting things in place throughout the community. Okay, so I'm gonna have Stacy come up and she's gonna talk about the Think Clayton brand. So, you know, brand is more than just a logo and we're trying to create a place. Um, you know, a brand is everything that, that a person's collected experience, all the experiences of a place and a town and a business. Um, it is every interaction that you have. When I go into Rejoice, it's my experience there. What I felt like when I walked in there and when I bought that dress. Or Dr. Ledeni, it's when I brought Spencer to get his teeth, and you guys had toys and the TV on the screen, and I just felt like, wow, he really cares. Or when we went into Hudson's Hardware because we were having trouble with the lawn, and you know, people walked right up to us and asked us what we need and then took us where we wanted to go. It's, it's all those things. And it's also what people are saying about you when you're not around, right? What they're telling other people. Well, I went to Clayton, and, and I had this experience. Um, I had an anchor friend who said that your smile is your logo, your personality is your business card, but the feeling you leave people with when they have an experience with you is your brand. It's a feeling, it's a place, it's, it's Clayton, it's home. Right? It's that home is a, a feeling that you have. Um, and the best brands, the most popular brands, um, have aspirational goals that we want to be part of, right? Uh, nonprofits are the epitome of this, right? The American Cancer Society. Uh, we want a world without cancer, right? Of course I do. My mom died from cancer. We want a world without cancer, right? Habitat for humanity. We want everyone to have a decent place to live, right? And think about it. These are the organizations and brands that we are most willing to give our time to and give our money to because we're part of something. We're part of an idea and a feeling and, and we're willing to give our time and our money to them with no product or service that they're giving us. You know, it's just we want to be part of their brand. And that's a great relationship, right? Um, so is this our brand? No, it's just a logo, right? For me, as the public information officer for the town, this is a stamp for me. This is 
what your tax dollars are doing for you. I want to look around Clayton and see this everywhere so that I know, well, that's my tax dollars working for me. Oh, there's my water tower. That's my tax dollars. That, that's the town providing me this core service of clean, quality water. Oh, there's my website and the free concerts the town does for me, because look, there's the logo. There's, uh, there's my snow plows. They're going to be working for me, hopefully not too much this winter, right? Oh, and, and there's when the... Uh, well, that was a, a whiskey truck that tipped over on 70, and there's my town cleaning up all that liquor off my streets, right? That's fine. But, but one of the things that we don't do and that I'm most guilty of is I'm not, we're not consistent with that. So, so there's East Clayton Dog Park. Is, is that my tax dollars? Well, I don't know. I don't see that logo. I don't see that stamp. How about those guys? One of the largest parts of our town budget is public safety. Is that my tax dollars working for me? I don't know. I don't see the logo on it. Maybe it's not, right? So being consistent about Clayton and where we are and where we're working for you, right, is important. So Angela talked about sense of place, you know, a feeling, consistency, and unique, right? We want to stand out. There are 19,354 incorporated places in the country, other towns and cities that we're competing with for businesses and for where I want to start a family, right? 552 incorporated places just in North Carolina that we're competing with. Oh, I heard great things. North Carolina's growing. I want to go to North Carolina. Well, where? There's 552 other choices. There are 37 other Claytons <laughs> in the U.S. Darn it. Look at all of them. Oh, my gosh. So we got to stand out. We, which dot are we? How can we be the dot, the Clayton that people choose, right? Um, and some towns have unique, right? Claytex, Georgia is the fruitcake capital of the world. Wouldn't it be cool if we just had a thing? Fruitcake. And then we just put fruitcakes everywhere, and that would be the logo, right? Or how about welcome to Gas, Kansas? Don't pass gas, stop and enjoy it. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool to have a slogan like that? I mean, we would just stand apart, right? Um, or how about Hooker, Texas? And we could go to the chamber and buy one of these great t-shirts. Unique, right? Unique. We want to be unique, right, to be competitive. Unique is dangerous sometimes, right? So we don't, we don't want to be unique, right? Um, I, Lexington, I think, does it well. Um, I don't know why I love this blue horse. And of course, they have a huge tax base, and they hired one of the best PR marketing companies in the country. But Lex is just cool. I don't know why I love it. And obviously, the horse capital of the world, they have a thing, right? They're known for a thing. And, and they know that they don't just want to be known to be horse. They've got Visit Lex Bourbon, Visit Lex Feast, so you want to eat, leisure, equestrian, they get it. And they've learned how Big Lex can be marketed on tote bags and thing. Big Lex drank my bourbon, so they've given the horse a personality. But that's cool, and that's unique. Um, and, and you want that. You want something that, you know, that, you know rejoice, you could sell totes with, with that you know, horse on it, right? We could market that, right? Um, we tried this in 2007. We had a branding campaign. We worked with a company. And I don't know, they're not so unique. These were drafts, you know, that wouldn't really make us stand out. I mean, you know, what even is that, right? <laughs> and we realized, you know, we're not really one thing in Clayton. I would, if I asked all of you in here to say, well, what, what's Clayton known for? You know, you might say, well, we're known for events. We have really cool events. Or, or we're known for our art, like our cool sculpture trailer. We're known for our greenways. I mean, you can ride all the way to Raleigh. We'd all probably say something different, right? And that's OK. Think Clayton gives us that flexibility to say whatever we want. Think recreation. Think shopping. Think downtown. Think home. And so we feel like we have the elements of our brand. It gives us that versatility. You know, we can say, think shopping, and you can use that. We can say, think, you know, home value or home repair or har even think hardware, you know. We can use this, but we need to use it well or it's not effective. Um, and we want it to give us a feeling. I'll push play on this. We think, vers think Clayton gives us that versatility that we need to create that sense of place Clouds and that sense of, of feeling. Clayton, and we want you to think Clayton. Think industry. Think recreation. Think music. Right, we got culture. 
Clayton Center, the art. I've gone to places and people have said, oh, you're that town with that art trail. Big culture. I mean, that's what they remember. Think downtown. We, we're going to update this, but Think this is, home. I mean, this is a feeling, right? Think home, think families, think, you know, think great times, all those things. So we want to use this, but we've got to begin to use it well, use it consistently, and tell you guys how you can use it, right? One of the things that we're left when we don't tell you what you can use, you just go online and you get t-shirts made, think Clayton, right? Well, you know, that's cool and you think, well, okay, people will recognize that and know that's Clayton, but that's, is that our Clayton? Oh, actually it's Clayton, Idaho too. And actually it's Clayton, New Mexico too. So we're not standing apart when we're not harnessing and we don't give you the tools because you'll end up using this and think, well, it's Clayton, right? I'm selling our brand, right? But no, you want to instantly recognize that. So we have a request out for proposals from marketing and branding agencies to help give us those tools. We want to give you a website where you can go and say, you know what, I want to I put this on my marketing material because I want to sell Clayton. Um, where can you go? We want to give you those parameters. How can you use it? Where can you use it? Give you those tools and help you with telling Clayton's story, right? Um, relations, brands are really about relationships. Um, when you have a relationship with somebody, you're more willing to spend money, you're more willing to take a risk, maybe move your family there. Um, you, when you have a relationship, those are the most powerful brands and brands begin with us having a relationship, with us knowing what our elevator story is. And when you have a relationship with the story, you want to be part of that story, and you want to, you want to share that story. And then you sell Clayton, right? When we all know how Clayton makes us feel, what our brand is, you will begin selling Clayton, and that is economic development. All of us selling Clayton together as, a, you know, as one. And I think it's so great that I'm standing up here because we, we've never done a joint chamber of commerce thing with the town, right? That, we're building this relationship, and that's going to make us stronger. You know, this is how we make Clayton known that is economic development. So with that, I want to introduce Dave DeYoung, our new economic and community development director. Good morning. Good morning. Um, how many of you know who I am? OK, that's, that's, be that's better than I actually expected. Um, <laughs> for for the last, um, I started with the town of Clayton in 2011, so for the last seven years or so, seven and a half years, I've been the community, I guess you could say planning director, community development director. So on this Venn diagram behind me, I've lived on the right hand side, my left, your right. Um, and basically I would consider that the foundation of, of what we do in the town to prepare for economic development. Without the things like planning for land use, mobility, you end up not planning pr correctly. So you end up with messy planning and, and, and people can't get around and people don't want to live in a community if uh, they can't get around, do the things they want to do, enjoy parks and recreation. So I've, my focus has been on this side. And um, we're lucky enough that Chris Johnson has been the economic development director for the county for a while. Um, and he's helped us bring industries in, in, into, into Johnson County and into the town of Clayton. Um, and now we're kind of transitioning over to, I'm transitioning more over to the economic development side. And it's, it's been really a blessing to be a part um, of the growth of the chamber. I, I would like to call it the new chamber. Uh, it's changed a lot uh, in the eight years that I've been here. There's been leadership change. But the collaboration effort between us and the county has, or the chamber, has never been this good. And I would say our, our, our relationship with the county is getting better every day, too. Um, we really appreciate the um, expertise of the county. And I would be remiss to say, not say, that um, the water in Clayton was working this morning. Jim doesn't live in, doesn't live in the town limits. If he, if he had, he would have been able to have a shower. 
And I'm also a damn Yankee. Um, so, so there's there's a lot going on in in, um, in Clayton, and you know we're moving from that small town to the mid-sized town, and that brings a lot of great things. So. The branding effort that, that we're going through is because we know we're moving from the small town to the mid-sized town. Uh, the, the chart behind me um, shows what our census population is as of July of last year. The, those, that census data just came out this year. Um, you can see we've grown from 16,116 at the last census to 21,405. Um, I've put up here all the other municipalities in Johnston County. Uh, just by way of comparison. The, the bar graph that you see shows what their population was in 2010 and what their population is in 2017. Uh, clearly, um, Clayton is outgrowing the other municipalities in Johnston County. It is the fastest growing uh, town in the county. And Johnston County is one of the fastest growing counties in the state. So when we talk about the 100 counties that we have in the state, um, Johnston County's in the top five. Um, that includes counties like Mecklenburg, Orange, uh, Wake. So the county's growing fast. And I, I've heard Chris say many times, a rising tide raises all ships. Um, and my next slide's going to show that a little bit, or my next couple slides are going to show that a little bit. But, but clearly, K Clayton's the leader um, in terms of population growth in Johnston County. And that's, that's primarily because we're located on, I would say, the western side of the county, close to the Triangle. So we are fortunate to be where we're at. Um, our growth rate, 32.1% from 2010 to 2017. Unprecedented growth, truly. Um, when you compare that to our region, you can, you can see that if you, if you put a ring around the, 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 the triangle, around Raleigh, the 440, that's the first ring, and the 540, which will be the outer ring, um, we, we're ranking in the top 10 fastest growing uh, municipalities in the state. And that's if you take out the ones under 10,000 and the ones over 100,000. Um, I, I took those out on purpose. Uh, because you know, you, 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 if you compare yourself to a town that has a thousand residents and they grow by 500, they've grown by 50 percent, and you know it's a little it's a little difficult. But um, Wake Forest, Morrisville, Apex, um, Holly Springs, Fuquay, Verena, Nightdale, Clayton, it's a ring around Raleigh, and and with the 540 coming around to our area, if, for those who who know the 540 where it's going to be positioned, and I'll be showing that the 540. Um, is going to change Clayton. It, it's going to dump out at 40 and 70 bypass, which is going to become Interstate 42. So that ring that's been traveling around the, the, the triangle in a, a counterclockwise fashion is eventually going to reach us, and we're going to grow. Absent from this chart, you'll notice um, Garner is not in this chart. And you might have read the Triangle <coughs> Business Journal article about where's Garner. Garner's growth rate is only 11.5%. Um, they're, they're, for some reason, Garner is, is missing the, is missing the uh, train that's going around the triangle. But um, Clayton is not being missed. Nightdale's not being missed. A couple other things. I mean, we're, we, we, we're well positioned. I, I like this graphic because it shows our proximity to everything in the triangle. And not only the triangle, but the mountains and uh, the coast and all the colleges in the area. We are not that far from anything. Uh, we're 15 minutes from Raleigh. 15 miles from Raleigh. I won't say 15 minutes. That would, that would, that would maybe be an overstatement. Um, but, but we're very well positioned. And I think that's, that's in, indicative of, of the changes that we've seen in terms of population growth, um, businesses that are looking at us. And it, it's going to continue. We're going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to change. So are we ready for all this new growth that's going to come? I mean, we're, we're looking at um, Apple potentially coming to the region. Amazon, we've, we've all heard about Amazon. Um, Griffles is expanding. Novo Nordisk is, is expanding. Um, those expansions are, are, are massive expansions. Uh, Griffles just bought the 466 acres of land adjacent to their existing campus. Why did they do that? One, the land is there. It was available. But they're also landlocked at their other facilities around the world. Whether it's LA or Spain, they don't have the ability to expand their facilities. So they're, so they're expanding here. Novo Nordisk decided to expand here. This Clayton, North Carolina is going to be an insulin producer for Novo Nordisk. It's going to be the first place outside of their home country that they've ever produced insulin. 
Um, there's only two real insulin producer companies in, in, in the, the world, so that's a pretty big deal. Um, and what are we doing to get ready for that? Well, we um, are building a regional wastewater pretreatment facility. Novo is going to be hooked to that. We anticipate that Griffles at some point will be hooked to that. But that regional wastewater pretreatment facility will allow us to even attract other pharmaceuticals. And we expect that other pharmaceuticals or other major manufacturers will look at Clayton uh, because of that regional wastewater pretreatment facility um, and the uh, research uh, training zone that we have here for biopharmaceuticals. So this is, this is a chart we, we had in our comp plan, our 2040 comp plan. It showed our growth rates. The green line at the top was our exponential growth rate. Um, we have our, our water supply plan growth rate in here. We have um, our 20, imagine 2040 growth rate. Um, the star is where we are right now. We're at 21405. We're on the north side, on the upside of the exponential growth rate. If, if that uh, projected population continues at the rate we're seeing right now, I would say we're going we're gonna to beat the 44250 in 2040. We'll probably be over 50,000 people in 2040. So to prepare for the growth, there are a lot of changes to the roadways that are, that are happening, and these are important. Uh, the triangle, um, sorry, the um, 540 is shown on this map. That's the orange, the green, and the light green. The orange route is the route that will take uh, the 540 from uh, its current location at 55 in Apex Holly Springs area all the way to 40. And that tie-in there, as you see, is the tie-in into 70 bypass, which will become Interstate 42. Um, that, that's going to give us more access to the Triangle region. Um, we have roadway improvements happening to both 42 East and 42 West. You, you can drive down 42 West, and certainly you can see the changes. They've taken a lot of trees away, uh, done a lot of land clearing. So you can see that they're, they're well on their way to going from that two-lane cross-section to a four-lane cross-section to handle the additional traffic. 42 West is in, in planning stages right now. Uh, you, you've seen DOT crews out there um, surveying. The surveying of uh, NC42 is to go from, again, a two-lane to a four-lane section. So we'll have a four-lane section. Hopefully that will relieve some of the congestion that we see on 42 West as you head out towards 4042. Um, the 70 bypass is going to become an interstate. So w once we were just uh, 40 to the east, um, 95, or sorry, 40 to the west, I-95 to the east, now we're going to have a, a, a bisect that crosses us with an interstate that connects all those things together. So we're going to see increased, uh, increased traffic and transportation modes going with that. Um, so along with that, we're also having a large increase in residential <coughs> properties that are preparing for the increased growth that will be associated with the, the industries that are coming here. Um, we need to be able to handle the population growth. Uh, the inventory that we have right now is being absorbed. Uh, I would say we're on the north side of the recession now, and I'd say we're seeing pre-recession uh, increases in, in population and, and growth in residential. Um, right now, um, I think the estimates uh, that I've seen from our building department is we're, we're COing 60 new residential houses every day, or sorry, that would be a lot, <laughs> every, every month. <laughs> uh, so 60 a month is, is a lot. That's 720 new, um, new houses every year. If you put a population of 2.3 on each one of those houses, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of people coming to the area every year. Um, steeplechase uh, was something that was submitted before the recession kind of came back in the middle of the end of the recession, and now it's back again. Um, this time, I think it's here to stay. Um, they're proposing 600 units on the south side of this, uh, of this development, and it's a mixed-use mixed residential project. So we'll see everything from alley-loaded product to townhomes to, to large lot single family in this neighborhood. So the price points will be um, available for, for different people of different income levels. Um, the spinning mill has been sitting empty for a long time. Um, it's a historic structure. Uh, there's a developer that's finally grabbed onto it and grabbed on pretty tight. They're going to convert um, the historic structure into 25 um, loft apartments, um, all historic, using historic tax credits. And they're wrapping that with about 200 additional apartments. So right in the heart of our downtown, 
is uh, the spinning mill um, with brand new residential units that can service not only uh, the downtown area, which continues to grow, uh, but the, um, the uh, pharmaceuticals and the other industries in town that, that are looking for employees. We've already talked a little bit about the Novo Nordisk expansion, $2 billion right now. If you go out to Novo Nordisk, they have somewhere between 3,000 and 3,500 daily construction workers on site. Um, now they feed them on site uh, every day because if they actually had to leave the site and come into town, one, the town couldn't handle 3,000 uh, workers all at once to all the restaurants in downtown, but it, they need to keep the employees there uh, so that they're, they're, the timeliness of, of their work uh, cycle continues. Um, 700 full-time jobs, I, I mentioned that, uh, and that those are white-collar positions, so we expect that once this, this facility is up and running, uh, we'll see a lot more permanent residents coming to the town. We are experiencing in all of the um, mobile home parks and RV parks in town and around town an increase in, um, increase in, in, in uh, use because the people who are working here are trying to stay in the area. So we are experiencing some, some very positive things because of, of the workers that are out at Novo Nordisk. Griffles, Griffles has expanded every, every single um, year since I've been here. They're, they're doing something. They're either building something or they're planning for something. Uh, the image behind me shows the, the most recent thing that's been built. It's, it's complete now. It's their office building. Um, but as soon as they finished that, as soon as they finished that, they came in with uh, phase two, uh, their north fractionation facility, their second one. Um, and each time they do that, they're adding employees. I think the last one was a $250 million project and added 150 uh, new full-time employees. So the growth is just unprecedented in, the, in these uh, biopharmaceuticals. Um, we, we get a lot of, now that we've made it to that middle range, um, we're starting to see uh, businesses that, that would pass us by before and not look at Clayton like Aldi, uh, like Publix. They're, they're actually shopping for parcels and property in town so, so they can provide support services to our town. So we're also well positioned in, in that regard. And, and people often look at Wake Forest and uh, you know, Morrisville as similar to the town of Clayton. Um, and so we look, at, we look at what they have and what, they, what, what people are building in Wake Forest and Morrisville and we're working to attract those users to the town of Clayton as well. Um, Culver's happens to be one of those. Culver's just picked up a piece of property and um, they um, hopefully will be open in, in the next six to eight, not six to eight months, about a year from now I expect in between Pep Boys and CVS that Culver's will be at least under construction and, and, and moving towards a new restaurant there. Uh, Vincent's Pub recently opened. I hope you've had a chance to visit it, but our downtown continues to grow because of all the growth that's, that's around us. Vincent's, Boulevard, and Ingredient. Uh, these two are open already. If you haven't visited Boulevard, it is a very cool and unique place as well in downtown. And Ingredient is a restaurant that is planned for and um, we'll hopefully we'll see it um, sometime in 2019. So, you know, all these things, all these businesses, it, it comes back to workforce development. I've mentioned a little bit about Griffles and Novo Nordisk and how um, they have a workforce development center for biopharmaceuticals. Um, but we want more than that. We, we need workforce development for other businesses, everybody else's businesses. Um, and so we are partnering um, with Johnson Community College and the Chamber to hopefully get a satellite camp campus somewhere in um, Clayton. We've, we've kind of identified a site that we really think would work for everybody and we haven't announced that site because we don't have anything solidified yet. But we are working hard to uh, bring a JCC campus here. Um, they're very interested. Uh, they, they have a lot of leakage into Wake County, to, to, to Wake County's community college. And um, having a, an east western campus will help uh, them grow as well. So um, you know, other things that position us well, uh, clearly we're a rail town. Um, not everyone in the triangle, not all those communities that are growing as fast as us can say that. Um, that, that rail provides us opportunities to um, maybe have an Amtrak stop here one day, maybe to have a light rail stop here one day. Um, and so we're focused on that. We're thinking about that. We know it's something that would benefit us, benefit the businesses that are here. And hopefully, um, as we move forward through time, 
um, we can focus on that. So um, I, I would just like to say um, being a rail town is good. Having the Mountain to Sea Trail that runs through town is good. Um, it helps with ecotourism. We want to bring more people to Clayton. Um, we want people to be proud that they live here in Clayton. We want people to be proud that they have their businesses here in Clayton. And um, we're here to help you, um, both the chamber and the town. So if there's anything that we can do, um, please reach out to us, and, and we'd love to help you. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Ruth, who's going to wrap us up. So thank uh, you. Well, first of all, as the chairman of the board for the Clayton Chamber of Commerce, I would like to thank all of you for coming today. We had a great turnout, very excited about this. Um, and I'd also like to have one round of applause for all our presenters today. You have no idea how much hard work all this represents. A uh, couple of other things I'd like to do before I finish up here is to thank um, uh, Michael Granis, Bobby Bunn, for our, our town council. We also have Commissioner Ted Godwin. I don't know where you are, Ted, but there you are. There you Thank you. And Rick was introduced and Chris was introduced. I just wanted to mention those. We really do appreciate you guys coming uh, out to support us. Um, I think you can see by the mission statement of this committee um, we have created a, a large body of work, but we are all committed to getting that done and taking action steps and not just sitting around a committee table and talking about what these great ideas are. Um, we've all probably been parts of committees like that where the talk is great and the plans are great, but what's missing is the action steps. Well, I can tell you by sitting on this committee as the chairman, the action steps are not missing. The action steps have been taken. And we have already, through this first year, had a very aggressive schedule of things to accomplish. And I can say that thanks to Jim Pericone's leadership as the chairman of this committee, we have achieved those and actually exceeded what our, um, what our agenda has been. Part of what this committee is asking for is your support collectively as a, uh, as a body of investors in our chamber and in our community. You're going to be asked to, um, and I'm not moving through my slides, I'm sorry, I'm just talking. Um, you're going to be asked to respond to questions, to surveys, uh, those kinds of things. And, and because of that, we're going to be able to form this collective leveraged body that will impact our economic development. Um, when a large company speaks, people pay attention to what that large company is saying, what they're needing, what they want to accomplish. And why is that? That's because of their large economic development impact. We can put this together as a chamber and work together to leverage our body of membership and investors and speak with a collective voice that's just as powerful as those large businesses are and impact the economic forecast of what we're doing in a positive moving forward way for all members of our community, large and small. Um, I love the symbolism of the wheel that this committee has picked. That was, that was Jim's. Um, Baby, I don't like to give Jim Pericone any more credit than I can help, but I will give him credit on this, <laughs> on this particular issue. Um, because the symbolism of the wheel and the hub and the spokes, and when they're tightly integrated together, they move you forward and accomplish great things. Go great distances. If for any reason that spoke comes undone from the hub or the wheel rim becomes loose or the hub doesn't function, then you don't go anywhere. So we love that symbolism of it fitting together with the hub and the spokes representing our, our investors downtown, our investors out on 70, large and small. It's a huge branding visual that means a lot to how this committee is going to move forward. The other thing I mentioned is we're going to be reaching out to you. So when we reach out to you for surveys, I'm supposed to move this slide forward. We want to say that. So when we reach out to you to uh, answer questions, to complete a survey, what I want you to know from me as the chairman of the board of the chamber, I am promising you those responses back to those questions and those surveys are not going to go in a file and sit in a file cabinet and get dusty. I mean, we've all felt like we participated in surveys and answered questions, and what's the point? They're just doing 
surveys and asking questions to do that. That is not what we're doing. We are asking for your input and we want your input. We want your buy-in because we're going to take that information and create the economic development plan to move forward incorporating what your needs are, what your concerns are. We want you to come to us as the chamber to be your intermediary, to help you accomplish that, to talk to the town. I cannot say enough about the partnership with the town. Dave and Stacy and Adam and the, and the, and the uh, town council. We've never had this collaborative relationship before ever. And it has become an integral part of who we both are. So we talk to each other all the time. We're this one band, one sound message that we're delivering is, is truly the case. We are working together so we're all on the same page and talking almost every day and working through things. That has never been uh, our relationship before and we are very grateful um, to that relationship now and I'd publicly like to thank you and uh, the staff and Dana who couldn't be here today for making that work. That would not work without, without you guys. Um, and I hope you hear the word collaboration all day today. Because collaboration is the key to this. Collaboration with our investor partners of the chamber, collaboration with the town, collaboration with our county leaders, um, our town council. Please know that we are working to grow this community in a reasonable way and be ahead of this curve, as Dave mentioned, and plan this and also to listen to what our our investors are needing from the small business owner with no employees to a Novo to a Griffles to an OPW who has hundreds of employees. We're, we're going to listen the same to all of you to hear what your concerns are. Again, I'd like to thank this panel. I'd like to thank the committee. If you're a part, of, if you're a member of this committee and you're here today, raise your hand, please. We'd like to acknowledge. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the other thing is, I hope you will leave here today energized and ready to engage with the chamber and the town on this mission of branding us and getting interaction. And thank you so much for being here today.